What's going on guys, back here again with another video. Today I am bringing you part two of the reassembly of the 1000 horsepower block, block coyote. <laughs> Not a 1000 horsepower just yet, but can handle it, hopefully. So, today is gonna be the second part, and in which last week we did the oil pump gears, oil pump, oil pickup tube, and the oil pan. This week we're gonna be reinstalling the heads, doing the cams, and the timing. So hopefully you guys can learn a little bit from this video, so let's jump right into it. All right, so I have the instructions here. I'm gonna follow them to a T, and I'm gonna take you guys along with these instructions to show you how to do it. Because I am not putting the stock head bolts back in, I'm in fact putting the ARP head studs in. So that'll be a little bit changed. I just wanted to make sure I'm keeping the consistency throughout the block, keeping the ARP hardware, keeping everything strong. Don't want to have to deal with the heads, removing the heads again. That's why I am doing it right the first time. And if you guys are watching this video and you have a 13 or 14 Mustang or even a 15 plus, you're not going to have the same head studs as I do since I have the 11 to 12 block. These have actually longer head studs than the 13 to 14 and 15 through 17. The 18, 19, and 20 also share these head studs. So third gen Coyote and 11 to 12 first gen Coyotes use the same head studs. All right, so first thing it wants me to do is it wants me to clean this surface right here. This is where the, the washer makes up. It wants me to clean this with brake cleaner. So I'm gonna clean all these surfaces there, there, just along the whole head. Clean those surfaces along with the washers it provides because it comes in oil. So clean everything with brake cleaner, get all the oil and grease off of it. That way it prevents the inconsistent loading. So we're gonna clean these surfaces and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that off camera. No need to bore you with that. The spots on the head's clean and the wash is clean. I'm gonna go ahead and install my head gaskets onto the block. All right, now so with the washers clean and the spots on the head's clean, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my head gaskets. Although I'm not the most qualified to tell you this, your best bet is just to stick with OEM gaskets they usually hold up the best, they're just meant for the motor. You don't have a whole lot of inconsistencies due to the research and development that's put into every part that's for this motor. So that's what I got. I got the Ford uh, OEM. All right, now with the head gaskets installed, we can go ahead and throw the heads back on, which is extremely exciting for me. So, all right, so now with the heads installed on the block, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the studs in. What you wanna do is just put them in hand tight, thread them into the block hand tight. You don't torque these down at all. You just wanna thread them in hand tight. So now that we're done installing the head studs, we're gonna go ahead and install the washers that we cleaned earlier over the head studs onto the head. Next step is to apply the fastener assembly lubricant to the bottom of these nuts right here and to the threads of the head studs. After you apply the lubricant to the nuts and the head studs, then you're gonna hand tighten all of the nuts onto the studs. All right, now we got all the nuts securely on there. So you can see all the nuts are on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque them down. So there's a specific pattern that you have to follow so that way you don't warp the head or, or tighten it unevenly so that way it'll clamp down. You start on the inside and you work your way out. So the torque pattern is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine and 10. So we're gonna do a progression of torquing on it. So the first time we're gonna do is, so we're gonna torque it down to 40 foot pounds, then to 80 foot pounds, and then to 125 foot pounds to finish it off. So I've got my trusty torque wrench right here. 
We're gonna go ahead and start twerking them down. All right, now they're torqued down to 80 foot pounds. We're gonna go ahead and jump it up one more time to 125 foot pounds. Man, that was some work. I really took a lot of energy to get that thing torqued down. So now that we got this head done, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same thing on the other head. And we'll move on to the next step. Next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is install the lifters and rockers, I think that's what they're called, into the heads. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and install the cams, do the timing, so on and so forth. We are finally making some way on this Coyote build and it's extremely exciting for me. So let's go ahead and keep moving forward so we can get through this. All right, now that we got the heads in, everything is set. We got the rocker arms in and everything as well. I just went ahead and threw those in, just no problem, just slip those in. It's really nothing to it. Now it's time to go ahead and put the cams back in. And I had them out of the car for a while, so I did have them labeled with the tape, but I'm ready to go ahead and throw them back in. So I'm gonna take you step by step on how we're gonna do that. All right, so before we go ahead and put the cams in the motor, what we're gonna do is get some engine assembly lube. I probably didn't get the best stuff, but I got what was available to me at the store, so that's what I'm gonna go with. All right, so I'm gonna get some of this lube and just put it in all the bearing channels. Now, I was reading the back of it, it says this stuff dissolves in oil, so don't worry about it ruining anything on the inside of the... You guys can also just use some good oil. Uh, that'll also help uh, keep these lubed up too while you're throwing your cams in here. So now with everything lubed up, we can go ahead and throw our camshafts in. And you're going to put it in a position where the barcode here on the camshaft, I'll show you in a minute, is facing like directly upwards. This little line right here should be... Like almost 12 o'clock, but not quite. Like, or 12 o'clock if you're looking at it straight up, right here. It's a very neutral position where it's not pushing down on any of, of the valves. We're gonna go ahead and throw the intake cam on now. And this slope here needs to be at 7 o'clock. Just like that. So now with these on, we can go ahead and throw our cam caps back on. Since I did get a new timing chain and timing set, I replaced the, the tensioners. But, so we're gonna go ahead and throw these back on and we'll get to the torque specs here in a second. All right, so we're gonna torque the cam cap bolts down to 53 inch pounds plus a 45 degree turn. We're gonna work our way from the inside out. So starting the inside bolt here, there, 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 just like that. So, go ahead and get started. So as far as the positioning of the cams on the driver's side or the left head, the timing mark on the intake cam is going to face downwards towards like the oil pump and the exhaust cam is going to face straight up basically, like straight vertically and you should see both of the bar codes on the driver's side. Now on the passenger side or the right head, you should also see both of the bar codes on the intake cam, the timing mark is going to face directly straight up and the exhaust cam is going to face towards the oil pump. So it's flipped on this side. Now with the cams installed, we can go ahead and throw the phasers and sprockets on. The timing on the phasers is going to look. This is the exhaust phaser. This is the intake phaser and sprocket. So the single timing mark on the chain is going to line up with the, the timing mark on the exhaust phaser right there and the double will line up with the one on the intake. So we're gonna go ahead and throw those on now since we got it all timed up. We're gonna go ahead and throw them on the cams. All right, so finally, after struggling with it for a little bit, got the phasers on. And go ahead and tighten these down now. All right, so now that we got the cams done on both sides completely, we're gonna go ahead and start with the timing. What I'm doing now is just putting the chain guides in. Now I got the chain soaked in oil, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the left side of the motor first. 
So you're going to line up, since it's on the left side, you're going to line up the L timing mark with this. And then there's also a tick down here on the bottom of the, of the sprocket that you're going to line it up with as well. All right, so the tensioners that came with the new timing kit, the this part is too narrow, and if you see the stock one, it has this a uh, whole lot of space right here, so the bolt's a lot longer for the stock ones, and it didn't come with any bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the stock tensioners. What I did was I just reset the tensioner. There's a ratchet mechanism in here. You just pull that back while you push this down, and then when you get that compressed, you can just put the pin in there, and it locks this ratchet in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these tensioners back in. All right, looks like we're ready to go ahead and pull the pin and tension up the side of the chain. Awesome. All right, so it looks like we're ready for the right side of the motor, which is the passenger side. We're gonna go ahead and start throwing the timing guides on the motor along with the chains as well. All right, guys, so we got the timing all done finally. We have come to an end of the timing of the Coyote motor. We're gonna go ahead and do one last thing to finish it off. And we're gonna go ahead and install the timing cover. Right now, I was just putting the gaskets on there along with some RTV to make sure I have a good seal on there. I also did change out the timing cover uh, main seal right here in the center. <clears throat> it's really easy, you just tap it out and put the new one in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to line up this timing cover as best as I can. We got the timing cover installed. I went ahead and threw a valve cover on as well just to kind of see how it looks. And I'm excited to put this thing back together. This thing is almost done. We are just about there. All the front cover bolts is torqued down to 18 foot pounds plus 60 degrees extra rotation. And that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you guys learned a lot as well. It was the first time for me to do timing on a coyote and it was really actually not that difficult. I was very intimidated to do it initially, but you know what? It wasn't that bad. So, like I said and like you guys saw, we got the cams done, timing done. We are just about finished with this motor. I'm only waiting on one thing to complete before I get ready to throw it back in the car, which is I am waiting for a pilot bearing to come in for my clutch. And I'm also waiting for a rear main cover to come in. I got one from MMR on the way right now because I didn't want to reuse my original one since this motor didn't have one, uh, didn't come with one. I didn't want to reuse my original one since the block uh, exploded and it could have warped or, or anything could happen. I just don't want to use an old rear main seal and rear main cover just because I'd rather update it with something new and that will help the structural integrity of the motor as well. So that's coming up next for this motor. But for now, cams and timing is all done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Y'all have a good one and I'll catch you guys in the next video.